All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Google Next, and I'm with Jay Chen, VP of Product Marketing at Starburst. Jay, welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you so much. Exciting to be here. It's finally good to have you on the show. It's been a while. Uh, I think we've connected, uh, but you know, I haven't seen you at events. So now it's good to now finally it's you. Good to finally put the face in the name. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. I wanted to, you know, obviously, just for our audience, if you can first start with your introduction. What do you do at Starburst? And what do you think about Google Next this year? Yeah, yeah, so my name is Jay Chen, VP of Product Marketing here at Starburst. Been here for about two and a half years. Yeah. I've seen a lot of exciting change in the industry and within the company over the time. Uh, we've developed a lot of new product advancements, enhancements over the, over the years, and also just really trying to help our customers solve new problems. Right? True. So um, you've probably seen some of our messaging evolve over the years, you know, talking about initially data mesh, data products, right. now data lake house is really where we're headed. And I think it's been kind of a long time coming and you know, all these pieces coming together right. to land where we are today. So we're happy to talk more about that with you today. Fantastic. And also quickly, since we are on this topic of the, the topic of evolution, right? Uh, we see data space evolving so quickly as well, not as compared to as AI. AI is evolving every day, I would say. But in today's uh, data lakehouse world, uh, what common patterns are you seeing around Trino? Would you like to share a little about that as well? Yeah, Trino, Trino has seen such a huge rise in the data space. Right. I think uh, we all know that Trino is a hugely popular engine, query engine for, for data lakes and kind of all kinds of data sources. True. Um, but you know, we see many large organizations around the world at internet scale, you know, like Netflix, LinkedIn, Shopify, even Apple. These companies are using Trino to query massive amounts of data, not only for analytics purposes, but also for things like data science and engineering. Exactly. Also for AI, right? They're preparing data for Beating, like you mentioned, AI is obviously a huge area. Yeah. Um, and also they're building data applications using Trino as a core engine on top of it as well. And I would say this is driven by a few things. So one is just this like massive opportunity with massive amounts of data. Itself. Yeah. But also the, the large amount of integration with other open source technologies, so Iceberg being a really popular one right now, yeah. but also obviously with Delta Lake and Hoodie and even Hadoop to some extent as well. So. Okay, since we are on this topic and you mentioned about Iceberg, what does the Trino and Iceberg combination enable you in your data uh, architecture unlike ever before? Would you like to share something? Yeah, I mean, this is something that we see a lot, not only, um, well, we see this a lot within our customer base. But right. It's something that we believe in personally. So I think, I think you know, the combination of Trino and Iceberg really is helping organizations achieve, you know, the price performance, the openness, and the actual warehouse-like experience that you would expect to have on a proprietary platform, but with an open platform. True. Right, so um, obviously Iceberg helps you manage and access massive amounts of data at a very low cost, it scales really well. Yeah. And Trino is a perfect match, a perfect engine on top of it. Right. right. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of unlock there, a lot of opportunities and, and use cases being unlocked with this combination. Okay, that's pretty interesting, great insights there. Also since, uh, you know, obviously at Google Next as well, we are hearing a lot around AI yeah. and the capabilities AI agents. Uh, just wanted to uh, learn a little about, you know, as people navigate through the world of AI, what does having a solid Lakehouse Foundation entail? And also how does it, you know, help solidify your data layer for eventual AI innovations? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's something we think a lot, we think a lot about. So from our point of view, you can't really have a strong AI strategy without having a strong data strategy. Right? We all know that AI is built on data. Hmm. And so we see that the lake house, especially an open lake house, is the ideal platform for preparing data, for managing data, right. for feeding data into any AI models that you might have. Hmm. And so in fact, we see, from our point of view, um, what we call, we're calling this the ice house, right? So it's an iceberg lake house. We love, yeah. we love names here. But we see that as really kind of almost an operating system for, for AI. So essentially when you think about what's needed to, to build uh, reliable, performant AI models, you need a few different things. You need to be able to access the data that you need to either train the model or to, to use you know, for, for inference or retrieval. You need security and governance to make sure that you know, PII and other uh, you know, uh, secure or private data should not get either fed into the model or to right. show up on the output. Right. Um, and you also need high performance to, for you know, the engine to process all the data and organize it in a way um, that your, you know, either your model training or your inference um, uh, pipelines can, can use it for, for useful things, right? So, yeah. so that's really how we see the open lake house as like the operating system for AI. Love these insights. Uh, and also, uh, can you talk us through some of your recent announcements that uh, at Starburst to help you 
enable the data lake house. Uh, I would love to know a little about that as well. Yeah, we actually just announced it this morning. We a press release and a, and a blog post announcement yes. around our uh, managed ice house offering. Hmm. So it basically what it is, it's Starburst Galaxy, a full of man fully managed offering, now allows you to um, do streaming ingestion into an iceberg right. data lake. Um, also, automatic pipeline generation, yeah. streaming pipeline generation, right. and data optimization and management, all within a fully managed platform. Okay. So what that means, I mean, for our customers, right, we hear a lot of where our customers want to adopt Iceberg, but it's hard. hard they don't know right. how, right? They hear about it a lot, they, hear, they see all the, the innovative companies using it, but they struggle with getting it set up and managing it over time. Mm. And so now, with the managed Ice House on Starburst Galaxy, it takes all that work out for you. Okay, that's pretty yeah. interesting and very helpful for the customers for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's currently in private preview. We're taking new signups right now, and we'd be excited to share share more as uh, as we. As we yeah, more. I can share a link with our folks as well. Those who are watching, and they can give it a shot too. Um, quickly, also, uh, you know, these are great insights, and I'm pretty sure the audience would also love to reach out to you, learn more about things. If they want to reach out to you, which is the best place? Uh, is LinkedIn a good place? And where can they also find these resources? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely check out our website, starburst.io. Uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn's also a great place. So I'll, I'll check my messages and respond as much as I can. Okay, awesome. So yeah. you guys know where to reach out to Jay. Jay, this was such a pleasure and uh, I'm so happy we met and we did this. Uh, so thanks for sharing all the great insights and uh, can't wait to continue our discussion. Yeah, thanks so much. Great to be here. Thank you, everyone.